everyone. This is Aaron Yoon from I Flip Invest, and joining me today is Brandon Wendell. Brandon holds a Chartered Market Technician designation, or CMT for short, and has appeared uh, as a guest on Bloomberg TV, Fox Business News, and CNBC Asia's Cash Flow. He has conducted special seminars for the CNB staff on technical analysis of the financial markets, published articles in the Traders Journal magazine, and was interviewed in the Share Investor magazine. As a former stockbroker, broker trader, and a hedge fund trader, Brandon brings various market views and insights to his trading classes and lectures. Brandon, welcome today. Uh, thank you, Aaron. I appreciate you having me here. Absolutely. We're very much looking forward to having you at our event in Dallas. Um, people may or may not know this, but I've been a student and a fan of yours for, for many years. So this is personally very exciting for me. Um, but I think, I think the audience would like to know a little bit about you and your background. So how did you get into trading in the first place? I was kind of a fluke, honestly. I mean, I was in the military in the U.S. Navy during the Gulf War, got out of that and uh, needed something to do. So I ended up becoming a retail broker. Uh, my father was a broker and I figured, well, I'll try it out, see what it's all about. And honestly, I hated it. It was, it was a sales job and I'm not that kind of person. I wanted more of the, I'm more of the, uh, the nuts and bolts type of behind the scenes type of thing. Um, so I was fortunate enough to move into back office operations. So I worked first in the front as the sales side, then I worked on the order flow side, um, basically what, what they called agency desk operators. So when the brokers got orders, they would turn them over to me. I dealt with market making activities and got those orders filled for the customers. So it was kind of cool. Um, then I was approached by a small private hedge fund in San Diego and they wanted me to trade for them. So I decided, okay, well, I'll try this out. And I, I really found out that I love looking and analyzing the markets and trading. So got into that. Um, I ended up, uh, the company I trained through had some free retake policies. So once I learned how to trade, if I needed assistance, I can go back and retake the classes. And I eventually started working for them part-time as an assistant because I was there so much. They were like, yeah, come on, you can do some stuff here for us. Uh, through my years, I ended up proving that I could be a successful trader. So I was able to kind of share my knowledge with other people then as well. And I, I just love it. I mean, it's a lot of fun to be able to share a passion of mine, which is the markets and help other people understand them better. What would you say uh, brought you to that level of success? Well, I was very fortunate when I first started off, I was trading other people's money, not my own. So that obviously mm. is a huge advantage psychologically. But once I started trading my own money, I learned very quickly. There's a big difference, obviously. And I started working on my psychology, on my discipline. I was very fortunate to have a mentor that I could work with and learn from that mentor and have that mentor guide me through the markets. I would not want anybody else to go into the markets without that sort of advantage. Uh, you really do need someone to kind of point things out to you when you're doing things correctly, when you're doing them incorrectly, build and reinforce the positive habits and get rid of the negative habits. So I would say that the, the light bulb came on, so to speak, when I was working with my mentor and they identified things that I was doing um, psychologically as well as physically to make decisions and how to make them better. Wow. Can you give us one of those? I'm so curious. What, what, what well, was like one psychological tip? One thing that I had to do was, uh, well, there's a, a couple of simple things. One, uh, when I first started trading, I was trading in California. So it was very early in the morning. So here's a little, I mean, it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but it really makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Placement of your computer. Okay, I made sure that my computer was on the north side of my house, so I would get natural light, but it wasn't beaming in through the window and, and making me very warm and sleepy. I also, believe it or not, raising my monitor so that way I have to look slightly upwards at the monitor rather than just straight or down. A lot of workers, when they're, when they're hunched over their computer over the keyboard, they're looking down. That makes you depressed and not as alert. And when you have your monitor just a little higher, now I'm looking up. That's a confident person. You've got your chin up, shoulders back. You feel good. And wow. it really makes a lot, a lot of difference. You wouldn't think, but that minor change can make a big difference in your trading. I knew I was going to get something good when I <laughs> asked that question, but I didn't think it was going to be something like that. Biofeedback pretty much is what Absolutely. you're talking about. And your yeah. posture and stuff, setting it up so that you you are in a positive physical posture when you're trading. Amazing. Love that. Love that. 
Um, but moving on, let's uh, let's get into you. You are going to be talking about specifically your options trading program called SPX Cashflow at this event. Um, what got you into options trading as opposed to the other stuff uh, in, in the in the first place? Well, I kind of shied away from stock trading. I was a stock trader for many, many years, but I realized that leverage was a tool that I could use for, I'll be honest, I'm lazy. Okay. I like yes, to work very, very too, little. Yeah. Totally. I like to work very little, make lots of money. So the way you do that in the markets is use leverage. So why would I want to uh, trade stocks when I'm only getting a certain amount of leverage when I can trade options and increase my bang for my buck, if you will. So I can get better returns by using those options and still get take advantage of the stock market and the things that I know very well. So it just gives me more opportunities. I think that options are like the Swiss army knife of the trading world. A Swiss army knife has different tools, even the toothpick, if you get the right one, right? So you got Phillips head screwdriver, you got knife blades, you got everything in there can openers, whatever you want. Options are like that. If you don't know, or I'm sorry, let's say you know that the markets are going to go up or down or sideways, you know, you got more, more choices with options. You can basically create strategies that can profit in nearly any market style, and you could do it with controlled risk. And that's the other key thing that I liked. Uh, yes, you can put in stop losses on stocks. However, you do run gap risk, obviously, and your stops get triggered wherever the markets reopen. With options, you have a lot more control over that risk, as well as more opportunities to make profit based on the underlying securities movement. So I found they're more versatile. They made more money when I was right. They lost less when I was wrong. It was really kind of a no brainer to move to options over stocks. I love that. And I'm still picking up options myself. I'm still very, very much um, a, a newbie at it. So I'm personally very interested in what you have to say about uh, SPX cash flow secrets. Can you tell us a little bit about this program um, as related to the, the options trading in general? Right. Yeah, it's a little bit different because most people, when they started getting into options, are thinking uh, swing trading, holding for multiple days, maybe even multiple months or weeks. With SPX cash flow, it's literally that. I'm trying to generate passive cash flow income by doing day trading in options, which is almost unheard of for many people. Uh, we are, but the nice thing is, um, you know, with most people, when they hear the word day trading, they start to think, well, I got to have that $25,000 pattern day trading minimum, blah, blah, blah. We can actually avoid that. Okay. Wow. What we what we strive for in this strategy is for options to expire. The nice thing is that I think it was in 2005, maybe later. I don't remember the exact date, but they created uh, weekly options. And mm -hmm. now these weeklies actually expire every day. So you can get into options that expire. And literally what I do with this service is I find trade opportunities where we enter at about 2 p.m. Eastern and hold on until the expiration of the contract at 4 p.m. So you're only having two hours of risk. It's not going to be huge gains because there's limited risk, but it's controllable and it's sustainable and it's consistent. That's the key thing. Those consistent wins start to add up. So we're basically day trading options without officially day trading options. So we can avoid the large margin requirements or large deposit requirements for the right. accounts. We also avoid a lot of the commissions because if you don't, you let options expire worthless, you don't have to pay commissions to exit the trade. It's just, it's done. So it's a cheaper way of trading, controlled risk, better leverage and good opportunities. So basically every day, I'm just looking at that uh, chance to basically ring the cash register, or use the ATM, if you will. It's not the best analogy, but it's uh, passive cash flow by uh, selling options where I believe prices are not going to go. And that's right. the key thing. I, I can see where they're not going to go rather than trying to pick exactly where they're going to go. What stands out to me with what you just said is you're only holding two hours per day. So mm -hmm. does that, so that sounds like to me, I don't have to, you know, be glued to my computer for the entire day, which let's face it, that just sounds like another job. Like I think we all right. get into trading to get away from that kind of thing. 
Yeah, we're trying to create passive income where we can identify opportunity. Um, I'm actually trying to make it as simple as possible. Obviously, I want people to understand what they're getting into. So I have uh, on-demand education that teaches them what they're supposed to be doing. But then every day, I just send out text messages saying, look, this is the trade we're taking. It takes you a few minutes to put it in. You could do it on your mobile phone. I mean, you can actually enter in your mobile phone the trade idea with the stop loss. And that's a key thing. I always put in a stop loss as well. Remember, limited risk. But we're trying to generate passive income in a short period of time. As I said, it's not going to be you know, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars, but depending on how you, uh, you can use what's called gearing. Gearing is leveraging up into bigger positions. So if you start to create these bigger positions as you become more successful, then eventually it does add up quite a bit. And you're just trying to consistently profit every day in small, small chunks of the market. So we're trying to make life easier, uh, not creating more work for ourselves, as you said. Love it. Love it. I can't, I can't wait to hear more about it. Uh, you mentioned that it is consistent. Do you have you know, data or, or, or numbers or statistics I do that, actually. Uh, what, yeah. What kind of probability are we looking at? Let me take a look real quick because I do have the stats. Uh, let me see. Open. Um, uh, just take me a moment to bring these up. I'm sorry, I forgot to do that. Sure, but okay. you know, for instance, last month, July 2022, I ended up with 27 trades for the month. As I mentioned, we can typically take at least one trade every trading day. My win percentage for the month of July, and again, I track every single thing I do, it was 88.89%. Wow. Win rate. Yeah, that's pretty, yeah, pretty insane. Now, that's not always going to be that great. Sure. Um, you know, let me go back to the previous month. Again, that was July. I go back to June of 2022, and my win rate was 83.87%. So in my normal trading, my win rate is somewhere in the 60s, to be honest with you, the 60s to 70%. Um, you know, I've been doing this for a while. I do actually do pretty well. But when it comes to this type of trading, the win rate is much, much higher. It's in the 80s. Um, yeah, I didn't realize it was actually that high last month. I <laughs> uh, see. Uh, I was going to go back another month here and just kind of check out. Let's see. I did uh, June, July. Let's take a look at May here for a moment. Uh, May was... Ah, seventy-five percent. So I had a little bit of slippage there, but the win was, you know, the the size of the win was actually better. So I had uh, more income that month. So yeah, it's it's usually seventy-five percent or better, and I've been in the eighties for the most part. So it's we're looking for high probability opportunities. That again, they won't be gigantic wins dollar wise, but percentage wise, and having a number of those consistently profitable. That's what that's what helps. One of the other things that attracts people to options is the fact that you can get started to day trade with a lot less than the typical pattern day trading $25,000 requirement. So around approximately how much is like a good amount? We're, we're expecting less than 25, but probably not 250. Uh, what, what, what's, a, what's a nice starting well, point for someone? Yeah, to start in, order to do, in order to do one contract and when i say i'm sorry one position and maybe multiple contracts because typically i'm doing either what are called iron condors and i'll explain this in my talk i'll explain what the positions are we're either doing iron condors we're doing bull put spreads or bear call spreads or a combination uh for one position i should say you literally only needed a margin deposit under 500 dollars. now that doesn't mean that you can open an account with 500 dollars and do the strategy you need a buffer Okay, because you know, what if you get in, you start taking a couple losses, it's not 100%. So I would say that an average account size to get started is uh, anywhere from, I wouldn't go 1,000, you could, but that's stretching a bit, really 2,000 yeah. would be comfortable. So it's maybe 1,000 to 2,000 for every contract thereafter. So yeah, if you wanted to do 10 contracts, I mean, you're talking about fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And now instead of generating income of maybe $400, I'm sorry, uh, $40 a day, now you're doing $400 a day with 10 contracts or, nice. you know, so 60 bucks is $600. So it scales up over time. And that's the nice thing. You get started with a couple thousand dollars. Uh, it's, and again, it's day trading income that you're creating for yourself, but not with the $25,000 pattern day trading requirements. And we're trading options on the indexes as well. So I'm not a tax professional, so I can't give that kind of advice or information, but they're going to be taxed differently than if you're doing short-term income opportunities on equities. So there's definitely advantages there as well. 
fortunately, we do have a uh, tax professional also coming on the at the event. So you know, we so don't worry, everybody. You will be able to get that question answered as well. But you got to show up to the Dallas event to do that. Um, but uh, as as much as I love what I'm hearing, options trading is not for everybody, right? right. So let's let's also talk about that side of the fence. Uh, who is this a um, a good fit for, and who is it maybe not such a good fit for? Okay, when it comes to options trading in general, you do have to be aware these are derivatives. They're a little more sophisticated of a security. So if you're looking for a straightforward, uh, I, I'm going to buy if things go up, I'm going to short if things go down, then stocks may be the best fit for you. But if you're willing to take a little more time and effort to find uh, the opportunities, really what it comes down to it when, uh, when it comes to this trading options, um, I, I go back to Leonard Skinner's uh, song, Give Me Three <laughs> Steps, right? Give yes. me three steps, give me three steps towards the door. Mm -hmm. uh, here, I do three steps when it comes to options trading. I do try to keep it simple. Step one, identify the direction of the underlying security. Which way is it going to go, up, down, or sideways? Step two, figure out, are options cheap or are they expensive? When things are cheap, we buy them. When they're expensive, we sell them, period. And then right. step three, find the strategy that best suits you for that particular environment or that situation. So if, if you follow those three simple steps, you could trade options. Honestly, they're for most anybody, but you do have to be willing to put in a little bit extra effort. Um, now, when it comes to the specific strategy, this is definitely a little bit higher risk because you're trading more. Uh, you know, there's mm. three things that a person can do to manage risk or a trader can do to manage risk. Mm -hmm. Number one, they can adjust their size. They can trade large size if they want to take more risk, small size for less risk. Number two is frequency of trading. The more trades you take, the more risk you run of taking bad trades. So this SPX strategy takes a lot of trades in comparison to somebody who's swing trading. Well, you know, we're doing trade every day at least. Right. And then the last one is duration. So we balance out that frequency by using a very small duration. The longer you are in the market, the more risk you have. The smaller your time involved in the markets, the less risk you have. So we actually, I used to call it tuning the risk radio because you have three dials, frequency, size, and duration. And you kind of tune them to whatever is best for you as an individual. So yes. uh, the person that I would say this is acceptable for is someone who's willing to put forth the effort to first learn how to do it. And secondly, be consistent in placing the orders. Uh, the person who is not, who this is definitely not for, honestly, is just somebody who doesn't want to put, do the effort, who doesn't want to do the work. Um, I, I don't see why most people should not be doing this. You know, it's okay. an opportunity to create passive income. It yeah, really absolutely. Yeah. My, my favorite thing, um, as a, like the one thing that, uh, you, that I didn't hear you mention when it comes to managing risk is the number of things that you're trading, the number of stocks you're trading, the number mm. of maybe futures contracts you're trading. And as far, as far as I can tell in this program, you're only trading options on the S&P 500 specifically. So right. you're only really paying attention to one chart uh, at, at, the, at the end of the day. And that right. also, for me anyway, it kind of really narrows my focus and helps my uh, helps me manage my trading psychology and risk as well. So that's another bonus, sure. if I'm not mistaken. Well, honestly, I mean, I look at it like the medical profession. You've got doctors that could be general practitioners and see everybody, the family doc, or you've got specialists. Specialists typically make more money, right? I mean, they specialize in one type of medicine. They may not see as many patients, but they're going to specialize and get paid more. The same thing happens in the markets. Uh, even in my other trading that I do, because I do trade crypto, I trade futures, I trade Forex, and I trade options. I just don't do stocks. I'd rather do the options. Mm. Uh, but in my other, let's say my futures trading, I only trade a handful of securities. I usually only focus on about six of them. The reason why is I get to know them very, very well. And I know when they're behaving normally or when they're doing something abnormal. Mm -hmm. If you trade everything and you don't specialize, you don't get to know the specific patterns of the securities you're trading, and that could hurt you. The more you get to know something, the easier it is to predict its behavior. It's like meeting a stranger on the street and saying, hey, let's go get some sushi. They might not like sushi. They might think, ah, nasty. That's raw fish. That's bait, right? Or, you know, if I go to my, my beautiful wife and I say, let's go get some sushi, 
Uh, I know she'll get a list of a positive response because she enjoys that kind of food. Actually, she probably say, let's go get Thai instead because that's her favorite. So, okay. <laughs> but again, I can predict her behavior because I know her better. Or at least I think right. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, marriage is a, is a mystery. It's a, it's, <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I, I absolutely agree with what you're saying. It's like, you know, just because someone is a, uh, like Michael Jordan, best basketball player ever, but average baseball. at best yeah baseball yeah not so much right so it's, i think it's the same exact thing so you could be the michael jordan of one thing and be be very average or below at something else uh it's not necessarily always transitive like that um thank you so much for your time today brandon is there anything else any closing remarks you want to uh you want our audience to to know about you before we sign off well, I like to have a lot of fun with the markets. I joke, I say I'm genetically engineered to do this because my mother is a retired school teacher and my father is a retired broker. So I've kind of been genetically molded to be a, a teacher of the financial markets. And I really enjoy this a lot. I like to have fun with it. Uh, trading can be kind of a dry subject, but I like to interject some humor and some fun to keep you entertained as well as informed. I would love to see you in Dallas out there. Uh, if this is something you're, you're even considering trying to generate additional income for yourself while you're also working on your long-term wealth with products like the iFlip. Uh, this is perfect. It, it works right in with what you're doing already, which is looking at the financial markets, automating some of your processes, making them as simple as possible. Let me take some of the load off you and help you to generate that income for yourself and learn all about it and have fun while you're doing it. I can personally attest to that, everybody. Uh, Brandon was actually, before I even joined iFlip, Brandon was one of my favorite teachers who got me into, uh, you know, trading in the, in the first place and definitely one of the most engaging teachers. Cause there's a lot of boring ones out there too. Uh, Brandon is not one of them. So you definitely have a lot to, uh, to, to gain from his presence on stage in Dallas. Please join us October 20 to 21 in Dallas, Texas. We'll see you there. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you, Aaron.